Hello there, this is Shem. Welcome to my video, and today I'm going to be talking about the Shock Classic. Um, the Shock Classic is an Android-based uh, smart flip phone, um, and there are a lot of videos about this phone online, um, about uh, how it works, uh, about digital minimalism, digital de detox, that kind of context. But I wanted to talk about something a bit different, which is uh, Java game emulation. So uh, I haven't seen any videos at all about this, actually, and I think it's a question that a few people have. Um, I was going to say a lot, but that's definitely not accurate. Some people really like old Java games. Um, so back in the mid to early 2000s, um, all the way through the early 2010s, most phones ran on a platform um, called Java. And Java uh, used a special version called J2ME, um, Java 2 Micro Edition. And there were many, many games on the J2ME platform. Um, a lot of them were kind of unique and interesting. A lot of them were shovelware. Um, a, a huge number of them were kind of reinterpretations of console games that were being brought out for a new mobile platform. Um, and others were just kind of really innovative, experimental um, games. Uh, this is the first time anybody's phone had uh, kind of started to eke into the realm of being a smartphone. Um, and the first time that people really started to spend a lot of, times on their, a lot of time on their phones, particularly... Um, wasting time, shall we say. So playing games, um, browsing the internet to a limited degree. Um, so I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Um, Java games are a platform that are basically over now. They're gone forever. Um, just like an old video game console, except nobody's bringing them back for any reason. You're not going to see a HD remaster of any Java game. Um, with the exception of Galaxy on Fire, but I won't talk about that now. Um, and so... Um, it's really important that we preserve these games, and I also think it's really nice for people to be able to uh, experience these games. And especially to experience them in a relatively close way that they were supposed to be played. And that meaning with a physical keypad, like the Shot Classic has. Um, so let me talk about the hardware um, a minute. First of all, people might ask, how do Java games perform on this phone? Um, well, performance is really not a consideration at all. Um, these phones were, th these old Java phones were so limited in their hardware and in their specifications that you could probably buy a ten a ten dollar uh, Android phone and play them flawlessly um, using using a Java emulator. There, there's really not a lot to emulate here in terms of hardware. Um, I, if I remember right, J2ME on uh, the platform had like a maximum of 160 kilobytes of RAM or something like that. Maybe it was 512, but it was under a megabyte. Um, my uh, Asus Zenfone 8, which I'm recording this on, has 16 gigs of RAM. So, you know, there's really no comparison. Uh, in short, the performance of pretty much every Java game is perfect on this device. The main limitation is in the game th themselves, which are often um, frame limited uh, and stuff like that. So... Next, let's talk about the actual physical device itself. Um, and just a reminder, this isn't a review of the phone. This is only a review in the context of Java games. So you have a um, 480 by 800 uh, pixel 3.2-inch uh, display, I believe. Um, and uh, it's a customized version of Android. Um, the display is super nice. It's a much higher resolution than you would have gotten in, uh, in old Java games. Uh, sorry, Java phones, which typically maxed out at about 240 by uh, 320, I believe. Um, but because of uh, the awesome J2ME loader app, you're going to see why that's not an issue. Um, so the screen is great, very, very bright, actually, surprisingly bright, um, and uh, yeah, a great size. So now we'll talk about the keypad, um, which actually, funnily enough, might actually just be the greatest T9 keypad I've ever used. Um, if you look here, the buttons are really big. They're nice and big, um, you, but you can still easily reach across the phone to all the different buttons. Um, it's got your navigation uh, four-way switch here, OK button, left and right hardware buttons. Uh, oh, sorry, they're left and right software buttons. Back, uh, which is super useful in Android. A camera button, which we don't care about here. And then a start and an end call, which again, we typically don't care about. But yeah, this keypad is great. The buttons feel great. They're not... Um, they're, they're really, really low profile, but they have a really nice click. Um, and yeah, like I said, you can reach all over the phone. It's just as easy to use this with one hand as it is to use the navigation. And it's just as easy to use both hands uh, in the games that, that benefit from that way. 
it, it may just be the greatest T9 ever made. Uh, I, I really do uh, think that. Um, it, it really is fantastic. So that's great news for us being uh, players of old uh, Java games that nobody else cares about. So let's take a look um, in the software. I'm not going to go into this. Um, the phone itself is pretty, uh, is generally slow, uh, it, going through its menus and stuff, but we don't care. We're just going to jump right into uh, the Java emulator. So I have two apps here. J2ME emulator is the one that you can get on Google Play and Asteroid. But unfortunately, it really struggles with some of the 3D games because it doesn't have, uh, or I shouldn't say it struggles, it just straight up cannot play them. Um, because it actually has a um, limitation that the, the technology wasn't implemented into it or something like that. I'm not completely sure, but it doesn't run them. So JL Mod is a mod of that app which does implement the 3D um, systems, which lets you play, especially Fish Lab games, um, which which is great. So I'm going to jump into JL Mod, and as you can see, I have a bunch of games installed here. Um, it's really easy to navigate with the um, navigation keys, um, but if you absolutely need to for any reason, you can hold down on the OK button, um, and eventually it will bring in a mouse cursor. Um, it is terrible, so I try not to use it. Um, but anyway, I've got some interesting games in here, so what I want to do now is just give you a quick uh, playthrough of a couple of these games, especially the graphically intensive ones, so that you can see that there really isn't an issue with performance on this phone. Despite how slow it is in general usage, which is a, which is a, a complaint on all cheaper um, you know, Android phones, it really doesn't matter. So we're going to jump right into Rally Master Pro. I'm going to start the bar extremely high here. Um, so let's go ahead and hit OK. Uh, I'll keep the sound off for now, even though this game does have an amazing soundtrack. So Fish Labs, the Abyss Engine, which is probably one of my favorite mobile game engines ever. But I'm not going to go into that now. So we're going to just jump right in. I already have them going here, so hopefully I can just uh, continue that. All right, great. So um, as you can see, uh, everything's been really smooth and good so far. And I'm going to continue. Sorry, we're gonna get past all of this. I'm gonna try and add. No, I'm not gonna do it two-handed. That's just not gonna work. So ignore my terrible driving. So here's Rally Master Pro. This is probably the most graphically intensive Java game um, ever made. Uh, and as you can see, it actually runs really, really well. Um, and this is a full like physics-based engine as well. This is probably not only graphically intensive, but um, you know programmatically intensive as well. And there we go, right into the wall. Um, but I'm playing with the navigation keys, as you can see, and they're they're big enough to do that. Um, obviously, you know, playing a driving game with a left and right uh, button that you use with your thumb is not very efficient, but it it does just work. It's it's just a really good um, you know it. For one-handed gameplay, that like you're standing at a bus stop or something, and you just want to play with one hand with the other hand in your pocket on a cold day or something, uh, it, it's brilliant. Um, so now I'm going to switch over here to two hands, which is kind of a challenge because of my camera setup here. Oh dear, I think I'm going to need to restart. Let's see if I can restart. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes, I do. All right, here we go. So we're going with the uh, two-handed approach with the keypad here. Sorry, I can't fit all of it in the uh, thing, and I refuse to make a vertical video. Yeah, there you go. I can play much better with this. But you get the idea. This runs uh, absolutely flawlessly. Um, it really is actually remarkable. Um, and the Shot Classic is just fantastic hardware for this. It really... Like, honestly, it feels like it was built for this. The, the keypad is just absolute joy to use. Um, it really is. I'm not going to show you what I'm doing on screen because clearly it's not very pretty. All right, so Rally Master Pro. Uh, now, because this awesome back button, I can just jump right out of this game. Okay, okay. and we're back on the loader. So there is something I want to show you, though, and this is pretty interesting. So I'm going to long click on this, and uh, I'm going to go into settings here. Now, this is where the resolution of the phone um, comes into play, because with J2ME Loader, the first time you load up a game, you can change its settings. Um, and as you can see, I've got this set to 200, uh, sorry, 240 by 400. And this is excellent because you can't do this on an old Java phone. Um, but since the aspect ratio is a bit different on this screen, it really helps. So this, this would have been 320, and that would have given you native resolution, actually. I'll show you what that looks like. 
I'm just going to change that to 320 um, and then I'm going to click start up here and as you can see I got this white bar at the bottom of the screen so this is the resolution that the game was originally in but just adding those few pixels um, doesn't change the performance of the game whatsoever and you get a full screen experience on a slightly bigger screen than you would have done on an actual native Java phone um, so that is actually even better than you would have gotten um, back in the day on one of those old devices uh, and I think that's just great I think it's it's really awesome as you can see um, this is what it looks like uh, on the old resolution um, still just as good but the performance is exactly the same um, and, you know, the benefit of being able to run a game in a higher resolution um, than it was originally intended for is, is just great. So here, I'm going to exit out of this again. Um, and, uh, sorry, the, the, the main point of that is that the Shock Classic can handle it with no problems whatsoever. Uh, that Just that little bump up in resolution. Now, I have tried to run this game in the full resolution of the phone, which is um, 420, I believe, by 800 or 480 by 800. Um, and it, it slows to a slows to a halt, but there's really no reason to do it because of the way the games are made, uh, the the texture quality and stuff like that. Um, it really doesn't add anything to the game at all except slow performance. So um, yeah, we don't really care about that. All right, let's um, let's jump into a, a 2D game because I want to show you uh, the difference between a 3D and a 2D game. So this is also running in the uh, 240 by 400 resolution. But because it's a 2D game, there's actually no uh, facility for it to shrink down. Um, and uh, the emulator does leave a white box at the bottom of the screen. Um, but, you know, we, we really don't care. Uh, and just like before, the, the keypad works, work, sorry, the navigation pad uh, works brilliantly, just as you would expect. Um, but also the, the numbers just work brilliantly as well. Uh, and as you can see, um, this game is running as well as it always did. It's still just as good as it was in the past. Um, how they made one of the best stealth platformers of all time, um, you know, on a micro device Java phone uh, is just tremendous, really. Uh, I won't get too much more into that game. And um, let's go into another um, kind of uh, more intensive game here. We're going to go into Deep. So Deep Submarine Odyssey, um, just as a little a digression here, is one of the best games ever made, uh, and I mean that. It's a kind of like a, an open world trading um, RPG. Um, if you've ever played Galaxy on Fire on Android or, or Java, in fact, uh, you know what to expect. Um, but this game takes place under the ocean. Um, you uh, get your little ship and you go fishing. That's that's basically what we're talking about here. But as you can see, let's just uh, get out of here. I want to turn around and show you the, uh, you know, the station here with all this 3D geometry on screen, it just runs perfectly. Um, and again, you know, hindered only by the hardware, oh, sorry, on, hindered only by the software platform itself and the development of the game itself. Um, and even then, made even better by J2ME Loader, um, which, you know, just bumps up the resolution again. You see this is running in full screen. Uh, I could cut this down in native resolution, but it loses no performance being in full screen. And the wonderful developers at Fish Labs um, apparently made this work on pretty much any resolution. Um, something else that you can do is uh, increase the text size in the emulator, so if the text is too small, um, you can you can make that bigger as well. Oops, sorry, I paused the game and brought up the cursor. That's my bad. So yeah, again, another um, you know high intensity uh, 3D game. This game uses pretty much the whole keypad for various functions, um, and you know this just. Oh, hold on, I need to go to the other place. Uh, you know you can even pan around your ship using the different um, hardware keys. I mean this is just incredible technology. I think this game came out maybe in 2004, if I'm right. Um, really amazing stuff, and, you know, I can't say it enough, J2ME Loader um, just really emulates it perfectly, even on a limited phone like the Shot Classic, um, in terms of, you know, processing power. Uh, this is Solar Roller. I'm going to go really quick through this, because um, I just, 
I don't think I really need to show you uh, too many of these. You've already seen the most, um, you know, graphically and technologically intensive games, and they run flawlessly. Um, a quick side note, uh, you can actually change the theme of uh, J2ME Loader to dark, uh, and it gets rid of the... It turns the white bar at the bottom to a black bar. Um, Alright, so before I die here... Uh, yeah, so this is Solar Roller. Uh, this is a lot like Roco, uh, Loco Roco, actually, uh, if you've ever played that on the PSP. Um, but, you know, again, this is a pretty heavy, intensive game. It's a, you know, a physics-based... Um, a physics-based 2D platformer uh, with, you know, rolling physics and everything. So, you know, we're not talking a, uh, a low-intensity game by any means. Uh, it really is quite impressive, and it runs perfectly on the Shot Classic keypad, making all the difference once again. All right, I'm going to get out of this as well. Um, so I don't really see any need to, to pull this video out too much longer. Um, so I wanted to give you a quick... Um, a quick overview of what I think of this uh, device in terms of a Java emulator. So there is not much not to love about this. It, it works pretty much perfectly, um, leaves very little to be desired, especially when it comes to the customization of the settings, um, uh, where you can change the resolution, text size, uh, stuff like that. Um, so the keypad is one of the best in class. It, it's probably the best keypad I've ever used, just because we're used to things being a bit bigger now, you know, we're grown up, we're not teenagers on our little microphones anymore, um, you know, and the, the larger bun buttons work perfectly, the navigation pad is perfectly big enough. Um, you can use it all with one hand, flawlessly, or with two hands, uh, if you want to. So really not, not that much to say about the hardware um, that's not positive. Um, I do have a couple of negatives though, and that is one, Android is really, really bloated for this purpose. You don't need it at all. Um, and in fact, the Shot Classic in general is really slow. And I have all my games set up already. But getting the games onto the phone, installing them in J2ME Loader, and um, config configuring their settings one by one um, is a real pain. And sometimes you need to use this mouse cursor, and it is just terrible. It's so difficult to use. Um, I'm I'm positive there could be a better solution than that. Um, but it's not that big of a deal, but you get the added benefit of all the customization with uh, with J2ME Loader, and you get the added frustration of having a pretty annoying to navigate Android operating system. I would love to see a native Java phone in this exact body um, running these games natively instead of emulated. You would lose the customization, but I think the... Uh, ability to whip through the, the UI really quickly would be a lot better. Um, in terms of compatibility, there's really no problems, uh, especially if you get the mod which runs the 3D games. Um, so not much to say there. Uh, the last thing is the battery life, which is okay. Um, I've done a few mods on mine, uh, uninstalling and disabling apps I don't need, and it's made a tremendous difference. The other big difference is uh, that you uh, can pl put it on flight mode, because I'm never going to use this as a phone. Um, I'm just using it for Java games. So you can pop, put it on flight mode and you'll probably get a few extra days of, um, of runtime. So it's really, it's really not bad at all, even running um, Rally Master Pro uh, in you know, all its graphical glory. Um, the battery life lasts at least uh, you know, a good day, or maybe more. So that's pretty much my review. I'm, I am going to give some con, uh, one more con, uh, actually two more cons, and one of them isn't really related to this topic, so I'll get that out of the way first. Um, Java emulation is one thing, and Symbian emulation is another. And I had great success emulating Engage and um, other Symbian games on my Android smartphone, but using the exact same app, uh, the EKA2L1 emulator, on the Shot Classic, I just cannot get it to work at all. Uh, it just crashes in every game and every application I try, and I would really, really love to be able to play those games on the Shot Classic. Um, so maybe one day that will be fixed. I haven't actually done an awful lot of, um, put an awful lot of time into getting that to work, so maybe it does in some way, and I just need to uh, mess with it more. But it's not a click and play like it is on Android or like it is on, um, on uh, for J2ME games. So that's not really related to the Java game thing, but if you're looking for Symbian and um, 
Engage emulation. I'm not sure this is the device. And also, with its um, hardware acceleration, especially on the um, Engage 2.0 games, I'm doubtful the uh, Shock will do quite as well as it does with Java. But it remains to be seen. If I get it to work, I'll post an updated video. So the final con that I'm going to give the Shock Classic, and remember that this is not a criticism of the phone itself, this is only in the context of Java game emulation, and that is the price. Uh, this is $100, um, unless you get it on sale like I did, it was about 70 And then I'm in England, and it's only available in the US as far as I know. So in England, I paid about uh, £12 more uh, to import it. And... I think that is a really, really good price for this phone. So that's my first thing. I think as a phone, as a flip phone and an Android-based one, and for how it performs and what it does, I think it's a good deal. However, I personally do not believe that emulating Java games should be a premium experience. It shouldn't require a premium device. It definitely shouldn't require a premium price. So whereas I think this is one of the best possible options for playing these old games, I really don't think you should have to pay $100 to do so. In fact, I actually believe quite the opposite. I think you should max out at 10 to 15. Now the caveat here is I haven't found that yet, um, or I, I may have, because I found a phone native to uh, India, Bangladesh, and Pakistan called the iTel Magic 2 Max, which is really similar to this, uh, except as a candy bar form factor, and they advertise compatibility with Java applications and jar files. So I think that would be great, but it hasn't arrived, and I, I'm kind of skeptical of whether it ever will. But that cost me £15 shipped, um, and if it arrives, I think that's going to beat this out just because it's native and it's ultra cheap. And I think for all the features you get here with the customizable resolution, the emulation, um, I really think that this is too expensive for the hobby. Um, so if you have the money... Uh, and you, you know, you're willing to throw it at this hobby, you know, hundred pounds or hundred dollars, go for it. I think the Shot Classic is a near perfect device for that. But I think for, you know, in the context of what we're doing here, this is way too expensive. Uh, this is not the price that anybody should be play should be paying to emulate these old games. Unfortunately, there's not that many options out there anymore. Um, a few that I know of are the 2017 Nokia 3310. Uh, 3G, which can install Java games, um, but even that was, I think, $80 at launch, um, and there's second-hand, you know, a massive market for second-hand game, uh, phones, you can get a Sony K8010, or oh, sorry, K810, um, which is, uh, or K810i it is, which is about, you know, 25 to, to 30 pounds for, for a second-hand one, which is basically the king of, of, emul of, of Java games. But you have to sacrifice this awesome giant keypad and screen for a tiny um, used Sony. Uh, and even that seems a really, really high price for that. Uh, I think we can do better. I think we can find a 10 to 15 pound phone out there somewhere. Maybe it's the iTel Magic. I have a feeling it will be. Um, if it comes, I'll upload a new video. But that's it for this. Uh, the Shot Classic. It's an excellent phone for Java gaming. If you are on the fence of whether to buy one for that purpose or not, if you have the money, it, it's absolutely brilliant. It really is. Uh, if you don't want to spend that much, I really wouldn't uh, do it because it's not really, uh, unless you're willing to, you know, get rid of your smartphone and use this as a phone as well. I think you're overpaying for the hobby. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you disagree. Um, anyway, that's my video. Thank you very much for watching. This is uh, Shem, and uh, this is the Shock Classic, and. Uh, Java Gaming. Thanks for watching.